So what's the construct of shooting a group? We think about it as the try to make the bullets close together, but what really are you doing? You're aiming at the same spot. All of these targets, they have a gimme on them. By a gimme, I mean, like if I was shooting at the 10, I'm gonna use this one because he shot it out. I would probably aim like at the tip of the one. Or maybe I'd aim at the little, that little, the little, uh, that little triangle right there. You see what I'm saying? Or maybe I'd aim at the bottom of the one. I wouldn't just aim at the black because that means I can be anywhere in the black. If the goal later, when I tell you, shoot target nine six times as fast as you can, well, now I don't give a as long as my sight or dot is over the black, I'm gonna rip the trigger, right? Different, different than shooting a group. And all we're trying to do this morning is isolate good mechanics, because we can't shoot fast or while moving if we can't do it when we're perfectly static. And we'll take a, tar a white target paster against the black background. The target paster is about seven eighths of an inch square. So if he had a target paster, he would have shot the target paster out. And that will be the goal. I want you to hit a target paster 10 times. And that might seem daunting, but it's really actually nauseatingly simple. You can hit a target paster from 10 yards pretty much at will if you like are paying attention. So here's what has to happen. My gun's empty. I'm gonna just kneel in front of you guys so we can just kind of talk through this. Who dry fires? Who does shit like this? Who does this? What's wrong with what I'm doing? No follow through? Well, okay, follow through's cool. Do that in a real life scenario. Yeah, how about Tap this? Drive. Who would do this, right? You would never do this, right? Couple things about dry fire. We need to be as intentional in dry fire as we are in live fire training because we're ingraining a habit. That's the whole point of dry fire. I'm practicing a skill. I talked yesterday with the guys I did an interview recently with a four-time Olympian, I think he was, three or four-time Olympian biathlete. Biathlon's pretty cool. I was super interested to interview this guy, and now he runs a part of the U.S. biathlon team in, in uh, um, New York at Lake Placid. And these guys are like a cross between Ironmen, like they can ski like on flat ground at like sprinting speeds. They're skiing like they're ice skating with the rifle slung, hearts up to like 140, 180 beats a minute. And they got the rifle on their back unloaded. They ski into a shooting position and it's all set up. Standing, the targets are like four inches. I think they're three and seven eighths of an inch. It's a metric size. And prone, the target's about an inch and a half, 1.6 inches, something like that. You have five shots. If you miss, you don't just like, it's not just like a penalty. You have to get up and ski a loop before you get to go back onto the course. So pretty much if you miss, you're probably because everybody else has taken off. And you got to load the gun. It's bolt action, right? It's a little 22, hyper accurate 22s. These stocks are thousands of dollars, handmade to fit you, blah, blah, blah. Here's my point. The way that they practice is so specific. They're not just like, let's go ski and shoot. No, no, they take each thing. Like they practice skiing with, with, with or without the gun on their back. They're just working the cardio and you know getting good at that. But these guys ski into a shooting position, unsling the rifle. They don't, the skis never come off. They load it, take the shots, you know, the, hold the gun all funny. Take the shots, one, two, three, four, five, unload the gun, re-sling it and they're back out. This is like five, 10 seconds, all that happens. They do the same thing. They prone out, load, one, two, three, four, five, get up, re-sling it, five, 10 seconds. They practice things in isolation, like just getting into the position, pulling the rifle off, getting into position, pulling the rifle off. Getting, like they just work that ad nauseum, videoing themselves, where's the waist? Is the gun coming back into the same spot each time? Am I grabbing the magazine? And I don't even know like what these guns, you know, how all the parts work. They practice dropping into prone, pulling the rifle off as they're getting there. Just these isolated movements. And all of that has to be coupled to, I'm trying to mirror what I know to be the best possible way to do the thing. And that's the problem. How many of us go to the range and we go like this? You know, we go to the range. Uh, oh, 
That sucked. And then you do that and you're like, oh yeah, oh, let me check my phone for a minute. Oh, let me take a picture. And then you're not training, you're just shooting, let's get firecrackers, let's get black cats. You'd be better off going to the fireworks store. I mean, that'd be more fun than just doing that. There's no, there's no intentionality. Get what I'm saying? Okay, so we come back to this. Like, what's the first thing that happens as I'm training? I've got the gun on me, like all of that's out of the equation, is I have to get the gun out of my holster. So I have to form a master grip on the gun, yeah? So that's important, how does that happen? All that biathlon stuff I'm talking about, they have repeatability, touch points. So if you golf, right? You, I don't golf, it's not anything I'm interested in, but you try to hold the club in the same way. If you hold a baseball bat, you try to hold the baseball bat in the same way. Why? Repeatability, yeah, so you get the same result. If every time I swung with the same force, but I move my hands all over, I'm never gonna be able to identify if it's the twist of my hips or whatever. So you gotta isolate shit, and then we change only one thing at a time. The grip is how we humans interface to the gun, right? So John Browning really did so much to create modern pistols, semi-automatic pistols as we now know them, and they haven't changed very much. You know, you see sometimes like a sci-fi movie where some writer kind of fantasizes what a gun might look like. There's only so many ways we can hold a thing. Of course, part of this is because we have ammunition that needs to be fed in a magazine. Maybe one day if there's laser beams or some shit, it might be different. But they haven't changed too much from 120, 150 years ago uh, pistols. What are we trying to do? We're trying to connect to the gun, be it one hand or two. How does the gun recoil? So what's, what forces are acting on the gun? Little, like, you know, physics 101 stuff. The slide, the yes. momentum of the slide. Okay, so we have in this inertia of that slide moving. We also have the bullet leaving, right? So equal and opposite reaction. We've got 115, 130 grains of lead leaving the barrel, right? Yep. So our grip, what do we want it to do? We want it to be repeatable. I also think about things, if some strong man tried to grab this and take it out of my hand, do I have it in a way I can rip it out of his hand? Yeah, I don't want to be holding it loosely. Uh, Justin, like, were you in the Marine Corps or something? Air Force. Air Force, that makes sense. So you had the old cup and tea saucer yeah. going. We're going to break you that today. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, that is great from the perspective of I want to, I want to hold this up but your arm's strong enough to hold it up without that hand, so we're gonna use that hand and wrap around the gun to help create that vice that we're looking for. Where would you say the fulcrum point is on the gun as it's in recoil? Right under the trigger guard. So you say here. So I would venture to say it's probably in the center here. I'm just like thinking it's gotta be between these points, but I think that that's, that's, that is a fulcrum point. If you were going to control this gun, where's the levers? Grip. Bottom of the grip. And the, what do you call it? The Up here? Thing. Yeah. So I wouldn't call that a lever. I mean, I guess it is kind of a lever. This is probably the longest lever, right? Here's the next longest, and that'd be the third longest. Yes? Of course, we can't grab the gun here. But I could, please. Like if you were gonna fight for this gun, I would wanna grab it here, right? Cause now I can take this gun away from you, right? So if the gun's fulcruming here, how do we often describe what a grip should like look like? Do we say high and, everybody says high and tight. But if I just held it here, I'm just holding the fulcrum, right? So there's not a lot going on. We do wanna be high and tight, but this is a short lever. So why don't I wanna hold this one firmly? Why I talk about this is we always say high and tight, but in reality, and I'll demonstrate it, and I'll show you before I demonstrate it, if I held the gun here and just here, I could stop a lot of recoil, most all the recoil, because the lever can't move. I'm gonna open up my hand here, and I'm gonna just hold it with my finger, pulling back into the palm of my hand. Got it? Move where you can see. Move where you can see the gun. I'll, I'll kneel down again too. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna get crazy, but what I want you to see is if the recoil of the gun is really bouncing around. First two-handed grip, just watch the gun. Is the gun moving much? Okay, so now I'll open my hand up. I'll take my finger and I'll just pull that gun. So I'm really only holding the gun with my middle finger. My thumb is just keeping it from falling on the ground and I'll work the trigger. Make sense? See it? Yes, no? Was it it's moving more because I don't have this hand stopping the gun from coming up like I would here, but it's still shooting relatively flat, no? Just pulling that finger into my palm. Like we're doing a pretty good job. Not as good as the two hand grip, but not much worse. Did it look much worse or, or better? I guess might be a, another way to look at it. Recoil control isn't everything, but what it is is it's repeatability, this grip. So there's many ways to hold a pistol. I told the guys yesterday of my friend Eric Camps. Eric grew up shooting a 92 just like yours, Justin. And because of the decock lever, probably his pop taught him to hold his hand down to not hit the lever. If you saw me and I taught you guys to shoot the gun like this, based on what you know from watching the internet or going to other classes, would you think I was dumb? Yes. Well, this is exactly how Eric Camps holds the gun. Eric's a USPSA Grandmaster that shoots at a national level. He just won the Illinois sectional match for production pistol. And this is how he holds it. We're not suggesting to hold the gun like this. And he wouldn't tell you to, but it's how he learned. And this is where one of the takeaways from this weekend is gonna be it's about principles, not techniques. Principles, not techniques. The principle is I need to connect my flesh to the gun and I need to stop this lever from moving. That's the principle. You can do it a lot of ways. What we've found collectively as trainers and people that practice all you guys is that this works for most people the best, right? and it's just a way. So it's never, hey, show me how you hold the gun so I can mimic it. All we have to do, there's not that much energy in these guns. All we have to do is stop this from moving. It's not just grip pressure though, it's also this. I mean, I can hold this hard enough to you know, crush an egg, but if these wrist muscles loose, I'm still holding this. You can see I'm white knuckling, but my hand is loose. So I need to set these tendons. Nurse, can you come here, please? You okay? Yeah. What the did you do to yourself? What'd you punch? Nothing, this is great plastic uh, container. This guy's <laughs> girlfriend's at home right now crying with a <laughs> ice. <laughs> so, what's this bone called? Your, uh, oof. Ulna or radius? Which one? Come uh, on, you're I'll not know. a Radius on All top. Right. The radius, right? So. Thinking back to college days, man. Relax. So, wrist straight. And he's gonna bend so that this is a straight line. Not to where the point that it hurts, but real quick, the reason that we're doing that, hand straight, hand cam forward. So if you just take your left hand and drop it forward like this, feel that. Now it allows me to put a lot more meat on the gun. Yesterday we had a couple guys, my gun's broken. One of them actually sent his gun back to Springfield. I told him to, I found out later, he sent me the message because his slide wouldn't lock back. I said, are you stopping it from locking back? No, not at all. Well, I'd send it back to Springfield, which he did. Gun was out here on the line yesterday. It wouldn't lock back. Give me the gun. It locks back. Well, his grip was so high that he was impacting the slide lock lever. So our grip should never stop the gun from functioning properly. So here's this very simple drill. Just relax, just relax. So his wrist is loose. And I'm gonna grab him and whenever he's ready, it's not a race, I'm not trying to hurt him, but this is just a demonstration. I'm going to try to touch his thumb. I'm not gonna do anything to hurt you. I'm gonna to try to touch his thumb just in that direction. I'm gonna to try to touch his thumb back to his radius. So here's what's gonna happen. You're loose, whenever you're ready, you just set that tight, this tendon. Okay, so you got it tight. So I've got two hands on one. I'm really cranking. I mean, look, I'm pushing him and he's still got it. Little five pound woman, our Achilles, these tendons, they're super strong. I mean, these things like, if you were to eat us, 
you wouldn't want to eat these parts, right? This is just, you know, when you're eating a, a, a drumstick, you know what I'm talking about? The, what's that? Turkey leg. Yeah, turkey leg, those big, thick tendons. That shit's strong, which is why when people blow a big tendon out, you can hear it through the human body. So what you guys are going to do, you're going to grab a partner. It'll be one guy will give one two hands. So you two hands, and I'm going to give you one. I'm loose. And okay, you say, go ahead. So I'm going to set my tendon. And all I'm doing is I'm camming this hand forward, locking that out. Can you bend my hand back? Or you, try harder. Try harder. He, I mean, I'm, I've got it. That's just that, that wrist. And you guys will feel the same thing. So then you'll switch. You'll give me yours. And you're going to do it with the support hand and the strong hand so you can feel it. Okay, whenever you're ready. Oh, yeah. Nurse's hands. Woo oh, yeah. Got it? What I was saying by nurse's hands is that I was demonstrably stronger than him. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he, yeah, he pooped this morning already. No. Mm -hmm. So grab a partner. You might want to use your target partner. You guys get the exercise, right? Hey, that already died. Okay, we'll have to charge that one in the truck. Alright. Oh, damn. We'll do it on you. Okay. So you set tight. Whenever you're ready. Straighten that. One of the guys that was having some accuracy issues is like, okay, it's my trigger finger. What's, what's stronger? One of your index fingers or nine of your other digits together? Which is going to win? Yeah, these are going to be stronger than just this. Your one, your trigger finger. There's guys like um, John McPhee. Shrek is the name he goes by. Does a demonstration where somebody holds the gun, no finger on the trigger, and he'll take like a heavy ratchet, and he'll put the ratchet into the trigger guard. I don't like it. I wouldn't let him do it to my gun. And he slaps the shit out of the trigger while the person's holding the gun, and it ends up with like a nice group. And it's beating the shit out of the gun. Bam, 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 bam. And what he's showing you is that the trigger isn't the problem. It's that the gun is moving. Where was the gun pointed driving the sight to the target, right? when the gun went off? Right there. And, and uh, <laughs> this one, where was the gun pointed when this went off? Right there. Do you guys see this target? Yeah. How about right here? Where was the gun pointed? Right there. So sights or a dot are just a... a measuring tool that is a relationship of where a little metal tube is at pointed in space. Well, so we got to have a good zero. If our zero or our sights are not aligned, the relationship between them and the bore is an inaccurate measuring device. So we, we verify that by doing what we're doing, right? Doing a, a group. And then we remove human errors. So the grip, you felt that with your wrist. So as we are joining, so we've got a master grip on the gun that happens in the holster, these touch points that we talked about. This chunk of this finger is different than the, that knuckle. This knuckle is about 5% thicker. Just to, I think the bone maybe is getting a little calcified from slamming into the trigger guard, but there's just some scar tissue here and callus from it slamming into the trigger guard on the gun right here. And you see this little chunk of callus here is not on this hand. That's from it rubbing on the beaver tail. Those are touch points. When you access the gun in your holster with your dominant hand, dominant support hand, whatever words you want to use, we'll say dominant and support. As the gun comes out of the holster, this master grip with the support or the dominant hand, you shouldn't have to make any adjustments to it. The easiest way to think about how we join the hands together is to form a perfect grip, okay? So if I form a perfect grip, I'll use some terminology now that you'll hear me say later, so now we're on the same page, is I'll say mount the gun. Just like you mount a shotgun or mount a, a rifle, mount the gun. So the gun's mounted. So now I've got what I want for a good grip. I just bring it back in, and without disconnecting this part of my hand from the gun, now I can see where my touch point is as I form the grip. So you're just gonna roll your hands forward. See this? Masayub 
had a couple ways of controlling reeve coil. I bring him up because there's some different ways to do this depending on the size of your hands, the friction coefficient of your skin. Fancy way for saying if your skin's soft and, and wet versus dry and callousy, dry hands don't grip the gun. Like right now, if you're cold and your skin's kind of dry, it's not going to stick to the gun as well as if you, you were a little more moisturized. You know what I'm saying? So there's never like a do it always this way. Moss did a wedge where he would wedge up onto the trigger guard and create a little bit more of a buttress on the front of the gun with this hand. Size of the gun, and now all the texturing people are doing, it makes it easier to, to hold on to. But this touch point's what we're looking for. So we're gonna form our grips, and then we're just gonna bring the gun back in. What do we call this position? Compress ready. Compress ready or position three, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And you just look down. I'm not using this tape because of, of shooting. I cut myself and I'm trying not to have the cut open up, but it just so happens to be that my touch point's right underneath that knuckle. So if you ever have somebody tell you this part of your knuckle needs to be underneath the trigger guard, well, that's bullshit too. Because if you got Wilt Chamberlain's hands and you're shooting a 365 or a Glock 43, that dude's hands are gonna be, you know, completely different spot versus your wife or girlfriend's hand or a small man's hand on a big Glock 10 millimeter or something that has a, you know, a big thick grip. You know what I'm saying? So it's the principle, not match this technique. Technique's great, but there's a lot of things people do that you will not be able to mimic. My buddy Z likes to talk about attributes and what he means is like God-given gifts or talents. I have pretty good balance. I think I always have. I used to be able to jump up from a standing position and land on a railing on our deck that was like a 36 inch railing. I could jump up and just land on the railing. And, I don't know if I try it now because I might blow like a knee out if I miss, but like part of that's just like innate, right? That's like stuff that you've got. I had a buddy that could do like one arm pull-ups, 20 of them. I can't do that. My elbow wouldn't even support me doing one, right? So there's, there's attributes. Those attributes, why I'm digging into this is I think we waste our time when we try to mimic things. So we're gonna build our grip, we're gonna come back in, we're gonna look for that touch point. So it'll look like this as we draw the gun. I know we're gonna be shooting groups here in a minute when we get back to shooting, but I wanna make sure that we're not progressing with bad habits because we're gonna get lots of reps. We don't wanna get bad reps. So we form a master grip in the holster. We're confirming that I'm high and tight on the pistol. I clear the holster and I bring that gun out in front of my body. Oftentimes we're taught as we draw that the support hand is flat on the tummy. The reason that it's taught like this is because the instructor knows you're not gonna shoot yourself. I'm not training for lowest common denominator. We're smart people. I'm training for a good outcome. So I'm gonna use a touch point more like this part of my arm against my rib cage. As we're drawing, we're gonna use a four step draw process just to get on the same page. And then the draw stroke becomes one movement. So one, we connect to the gun, our support hand comes to the center line of our body. Two, the gun clears the holster. Three, we make that connection point, karate chop, and we roll the gun out to the full mount. Four, three, two, I verify that the finger is off the trigger. I decock at this point if I need to or put a safety on and I safely recover to the holster, visual referencing that the gun is being safely put into the holster. If I'm in the appendix position or in a position where I need to clear a cover garment, one happens where I have the cover garment cleared and I go to the gun, right? One, 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 or it could be one, right? Depending on where that cover garment's at. If you're, if you're going from the appendix, I talked yesterday about it briefly, let's not rely on our life coming down to us plucking a shirt. There's guys teaching like a pluck. Think about how stupid that is that you're gonna rely on winning a violent encounter where you're having to pluck fabric off a shirt. Last class we did in Arizona, had a guy that was a plucker. He went to grab and the shirt fell. He got to here because he was processing a fast draw stroke. Oh my God, next thing you know, his gun went to the deck, which was cool that he let it go, but he had a loaded gun caught up in his t-shirt and it fell. Had 
his system but then more robust and that gun came up out of the way where he cleared yes it's my tummy and he made his connection and got the gun up it would have worked a little better so same thing from this position one two three four gun comes back into three visually verify and we're going to verbalize today trigger guards clear safe to holster and you're going to look it in one two three four yes so when we're got the guns punched out in a minute we're going to look at these grips we're going to see where our touch point is where it has to be and as i got the gun rolled out anywhere in this push out we'll call it this presentation this push out my grip doesn't have to change from compressed ready position three or to full mount right i'm not having to move my hand at all guys will do weird shit. i'll say come back to position three and they're like this like who told you to, what, what are we doing why did we take our hand off the gun why do we not ever all i've got to do is just bring my elbows in you know you can even flare them out if you needed to if you got weird joint pain so here's how we're going to do this and then you can take your long gun this gun's cleared out and you put your long gun in there put this up underneath the bed lock her down and it comes with a pre-programmed code and hearing that bump in the night you'd fall out of bed reach in pull your gun out and you'd have what you need you could also of course store your pistola in there or vice versa so we've got it in the vertical position i'll punch in the pre-programmed code which you can change of course she opens right up and now if you had this in like a closet or someplace like that you'd of course have it screwed down there's some holes to do that if you look i'm going to spin this guy around the back of this is perforated with a system that secure it uses to make walls We've recently been redoing the carry trainer gun vault, and you will soon see a video on the walls being covered in this product, which is super cool. Inside of that, you can put things such as these guys. And now if you did that, your pistola could reside right in there. There's also other apparatuses that they make just for pistols, uh, which I'll show you in a second. 